We are thrilled to announce at Softer the release of our long-awaited action buttons. This feature is going to allow you to take your apps to the next level. Now, this release as of today is our first version. There are going to be more to come, so continue to stay tuned as we continue to roll out even more functionality with these buttons. So first of all, what are action buttons? Buttons have long existed in Softer, but typically up to this point, you were only able to set up navigation options, such as open a URL, a page, or a modal. With new action buttons, you can now perform what's called CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete. So what does this mean? Essentially, this is gonna allow you to set editing permissions within your app, allowing predefined users to update records, add new records, and even more functionality to come. So let's dive into what we've released in this first phase. So what actions are actually available to you? The first is the ability to add a new record. This will allow your users to essentially add a new record to your existing database without ever having to touch the database itself. The second option available is updating a record. This action is going to allow your users to edit an existing record that already exists in your database through this pop-up form. It's essentially the same as the edit function that we previously had, but it's even better. Now you get to define which fields it inputs to show, as shown here, how they should be called, in what order to display them in, and whether they're required or not. So let's quickly set this up so you can see it in action. Now, in order to implement action buttons, you will need to update your block to a newer version, which is actually going to prompt you to add a brand new block and remap your fields. This you will only need to do once, and as continued action button improvements and releases are activated, you won't need to do it again. Action buttons are currently available in the list, table, Kanban block, calendar block, and inbox, and of course, list details block. So once you add your new block and remap your fields, you're gonna head to the new actions tab as shown here. You will see two main sections in this actions tab, top bar buttons and item buttons. Top bar buttons are buttons placed above the list to perform table level actions, such as add a new record, open a static URL, page, modal, download a list, and bulk actions, which are going to be coming in the future. The second option are item buttons. So item buttons will appear on each individual item, which essentially allows you to perform record level actions, such as update record, open dynamic URL, page modal, and update fields coming very soon. So how this corresponds to our database, let's say we have Airtable connected, the top bar button is gonna allow us to add a brand new record to an individually designed table. Item buttons is going to allow us to perform record level actions so we can update individual records that already exist. So for example, if I wanted to allow my users to go in and edit and update this project description, I would do that at the item button field. If I want them to be able to add a new project to this table, I would do that at the top bar level. So let's take a quick look at how we can set these up. For this first button here, add new project, if I simply click into it, you'll see I can edit the label here and then I can choose my action. So I've already chosen add record. I can change the action here to open URL, open page or scroll to, but I'm gonna keep it to add record. Then once you toggle down, you have the option to add the fields that you would like the user to be able to add to the database. So whichever table is going to correspond with your block here, you'll want to add the corresponding fields that you would like for the user to be able to add. So for this, I've added project name, the input type is text. I'm mapping it to the project name here. I have the ability to change the label and the placeholder and the option to make it required or not. So once you go through and add the fields that you want, you can also update what the modal is gonna look like, which is the pop-up that the user sees when they're prompted to add a new record. So you can add a title, a save button, a close button, and you can add a success message. Now you can add as many buttons as you would like. 
Just know that for the top bar, after there's two, you will have this dot 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 indicator that upon click will reveal the additional buttons. Cool. So on the item button level, it's essentially the same thing. You will click into it, you will choose your action, then you can add the individual fields that you would like the user to be able to update. And then the same options are available for the modal. Again, it depends on the block that you choose. Some of the layouts will allow for one button on the card and then the second indicator that can be clicked into to reveal more buttons. Some of them will allow for more than one. It just depends on what layout that you want to choose for your action buttons. So once you've set up your action buttons, you may be wondering, how can I define who can see what action buttons? Because you may have users in your app that you want to allow to update records and fields, and you may have users in your app that you don't want to give that permission to. Previously, we asked you to define global editing permissions before any editing could be performed. However, we found that to be a bit confusing and inflexible, so now we've moved it to the action level. So let's take a quick look. Now you get to set visibility rules for each of your individual buttons. So as you can see here on this first button, add a new project. If I hover over this icon here, you'll see button visibility. So let's click into that and see what's available. First, you have the user state. So most of our CRUD actions are only available to logged in users with the exception of add a record. Since this is the add a record button, we are allowed to define all users logged in or non-logged in. Secondly, you get to get even more granular by defining a specific user group. If you're unfamiliar with user groups in software, I will link a video below that walks you through how you can define user groups. This is an instrumental part in defining visibility and editing rules for your buttons. So for the add record buttons, these are the two options available to you. And then if we scroll down to item buttons, click on item visibility, you'll also see you have the ability to set visibility rules based on record fields, adding specific conditional filters as shown here. And don't worry, if someone can't see the button, they won't be able to cheat via direct API calls. Your data is fully protected. Also, the same settings are available for special actions such as drag and drop on convent blocks. So now you have a quick overview of what actions are available to you, how to define those actions. The last step is customizing the look and feel of the buttons. To do that, you simply hover over each individual button, hit the three dots here, button options, and head to button styles. If you've designed anything in software previously, this will feel very familiar to you. Depending on where the button is, you can define the positioning. You can also choose a font, the color, the roundness, and of course, the copywriting. Again, you can add as many buttons as you'd like, but just know that the rest of the buttons will be placed within a drop-down menu as we've talked about here. We believe that basic CRUD operations are essential to any software app. That's why we've made this available free on all plans. Only customers on the professional plan and above can set visibility based off of user groups. Now, this was just a basic overview showing you what's new and how to get it set up. We will be creating additional contextualized videos that walk you through example case studies so you can get a more in-depth understanding of how you can start implementing this for your own case studies. Stay tuned for those. We'll start linking them as well in the notes below this video. Also, what's next for action buttons? Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is just the first phase, version one. We have additional versions and releases to come that are gonna include allowing users to delete records, updating fields or replacing the value, working with webhooks, make, Zapier, and then in future phases, we're gonna introduce advanced button visibility, such as page URL, a logged in user's attributes, and more. We're gonna allow users to upend and calculate updated fields, bulk actions, and multi-step workflow automations. So be sure to stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed to our email list, join us on the community forum so you can be in the know when these future releases are gonna be rolled out. For now, we'd love to hear what you think about action buttons. Please join us in our community. Let us know how you're using them. We'd love to hear from you. For now, go out there and have some fun setting up your action buttons.